Or it's like so I was good saying, to see you, you again. You are an inspiration because well, of uh, everything. And I, I appreciate the commitment you put and the dedication you put to making each show. Same goes for you. And you're, yeah. you're, you're an inspiration to a whole bunch of people also. Yeah. And a welcome. Welcome very much to Conversations. Pleasure to welcome to the program a, a, a stalwart producer here at MNN, Alan uh, Steinfeld. He's got the program New Realities. And he's been at it for a long time, putting out programs about new realities in the full sense of that word. We're going to talk about what that, that means, but we've been wanting to do a program together for a long time. We're finally able to put it together, and Alan, welcome very much to Conversations. I love to be in conversation with you, Harold. Yeah. New Realities is uh -huh. about consciousness, how we are now at a level in our culture where we're learning to think differently, mm -hmm. and many things are impacting on this new thought, like the internet. Now, we're at our fingertips, are all the whole knowledge of the world is there. That's going to change the way we think about reality, and we're going to see the effects of that change mm -hmm. in this next generation, 10 to 20 years. There's going to be new inventions and new ideas coming forward that we could not have imagined before because we are actually living in a new reality. We mm -hmm. really are. But new realities, for me, also has to do with the whole body-mind-spirit connection. Mm -hmm. You know, in the West, mm -hmm. we have the body and the mind. That's it. The so, heart, huh? But with the soul or the spirit, it's the operator. So take a computer. You have the hardware and the software. But what do you need to operate a hardware and software? You need someone to operate that computer. That is the soul. That is the spirit. So. In the East, and we can learn this from the East, although there's limited in some areas, they had the trilogy. They had the body, mind, soul. So it was the soul's essence that gave power to the mind mm -hmm. that operated the hardware. Mm -hmm. The mind is just the software application, but it is the spirit that is the operator of the biocomputer. Mm -hmm. You don't have an operator without the spirit. Does that make sense? That is also the understanding of new realities. And where we're coming into now is the science of understanding spiritual technology. This is also what I look for. We're coming into an age of spiritual recognition. This is what's called the age of Aquarius or the new age or new consciousness or human potential. We're building towards that new reality where those people who said, I could only believe what I see are outdated. Other people say, it's only what you can't see that is real, mm -hmm. you know? So this is the age of spiritual consciousness that we're coming into, mm -hmm. and we're really at the forefront, and that has to do with coming together as a single entity, as a planetary civilization, a global village, a, a unity of consciousness on a planetary level, the Gaia hypothesis. hypothesis. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is all contributing to aspects of thinking differently. Mm -hmm. We have to think differently. We have to ask new questions because the old questions are outdated. The old questions give us people like George Bush running the government or um, the pollution in the environment. Those were the old questions. The idea of asking new questions, new ideas, how can we have a sustainable planet? How can we have government that is for the people and by the people. We've lost touch because they're living out of an old reality. Government, our politics is in the way of the people's will. And even we see this in medicine. Mainstream medicine has gotten in the way of people's health for the most part. There are more people dying in hospitals than being cured. Not more, but a lot, a million a year, they estimate. Really? Are from bacteria they get, you know, malpractice suits, every, it, it's an awful place. And mm -hmm. education has gotten in the way of knowledge because it's become institutionalized. So we need to create new structures in this society. And we do that by asking new questions. Mm -hmm. Things always change when questions, when new questions are being asked. Mm -hmm. When Copernicus said, what if the earth wasn't the center of the universe. What if the earth was rotating around the sun? That opened up a whole new doorway of possibilities. When Einstein said, what if I was traveling at the speed of light? How would reality be different? And because he did that, more things unfolded. We have a whole new field of physics because Einstein asked a new question. And you ask new questions when this divine inspiration, when creativity comes through you. Mm -hmm. It's only through creativity, and this is what I've been really talking about. Creativity, as um, 
people like Ezra Pound said, the artists are the antennas of the race. Or mm -hmm. Marshall McLuhan says, the artist is the only one looking into the future. Everyone's looking out where we came. The rear view mirror, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. artists are looking out of the front window because they're seeing the future come. They're actually bringing the future in. So when we acknowledge our artistic and creative connection to the source, we bring in new ideas. That's the creativity of en engaging a new reality. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so important, to acknowledge this creative imagination in order to bring new information to the planet, it gives us new choices, the ability to ask questions. Einstein said it's the questions that matter. It's not so much the answers. Mm -hmm. When we do that, we activate this right brain perception as opposed to living out of the left brain ego. We transcend the ego and tap into who we possibly are because I think this right brain is tapped into that spiritual connection. So it is all coming together to build a new paradigm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was on your show that I heard that economic person say that paradigms Who's the guy you were interviewing with the economics? Uh, I'm probably Robert Ashford, I think, more Ashford, recently. Ashford, yes. Yeah, he yeah. was a brilliant guy. Talking it was a great show. I want to study that show. Mm -hmm. But he says, in the paradigms, in the paradigms you're living, it, new thought is not allowed. It's denigrated. It's made fun of. It's, it's laughed at. So another new reality that we're coming into is the idea that we are not alone in the universe. There are extraterrestrials. There are hundreds of thousands of eyewitnesses. There's thousands of videotapes, tens of thousands of photographs. There's tracings on the ground. And yet, people are being laughed at publicly if they acknowledge that existence. It's because the old paradigm does not have a place for it. Because they're really coming out of a Judeo-Christian background, this extension of the 20th century, into saying, no, we only have this creation. God mm -hmm. only created this is what we know. And the understanding that there are, are extraterrestrials means that the universe and consciousness and life itself is not limited to this planet. It means that we have abilities to power new technologies. Everything comes online when we accept the anomalies that are presented to us. Instead of ridiculing it, what else did Marshall McLuhan said about uh, puny secrets are only publicly um, uh, kept private, but the great secrets are ridiculed? Oh. That's a McLuhan quote. Is that McLuhan? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, McLuhan was a genius. So McLuhan was an artist who was ahead of its time who brought in the future. So I'm saying this understanding of the acceptance that we are not alone in the universe is going to change the consciousness of who we are as these um, isolated countries. Isol I'm a citizen of this country. You're a citizen of that country. Well, when you meet someone who's not from any country, who's not even from this planet, it has the effect of unifying the planet as a singularity, mm -hmm. as a singularity. I'm going to show a clip later where we're going to talk about that, where I've interviewed a biologist, Bruce Lipton, on my show, mm -hmm. who talked about the understanding of evolution as a point of singularity, then diversifying into many, going back to the singularity. So right now, with the Gaia hypothesis, we're taking all the many aspects of who we are, and we're bringing that we're coming into a new singularity of being. Boy, you've, you've said a whole lot. Okay. And, there, and there's a whole lot of things because I, I heard a lot of things. I heard, uh, you know, uh, spiritual traditions uh -huh. and that sort of thing. And then I've heard a lot of science and physics and that sort of thing. But um, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you just sit back a little bit and you look at the, because you're talking about spirituality and you're talking about some of the, masters of wisdom out of history and so forth, uh, mm -hmm. Buddha, Jesus, and mm -hmm. the great sages out of the wisdom traditions and so forth, the Vedic interpretations of things. You, you try to lay us on with those traditional spiritual, maybe we could begin there, yeah. the traditional spiritual values by which humanity has been able to deal with uh, the reflective conscience they seem to have about asking questions about 
the way the universe is set up, what's it all about, the large issues. Those basic grounding wisdom schools mm -hmm. are things you like to lay us on with. Maybe we could begin with that before we talk about the transformations that is being heralded in this particular time in which we live, mm -hmm. grounded in the wisdom traditions of the ages. Well, that's good. That's a good place to start because those wisdom traditions are, no, are now becoming a public conversation. Mm -hmm. Spirituality is becoming accepted all around, not in a religious sense. The old religions are sort of uh, archaic, but in the sense that we are spiritual beings. So what Jesus talked about, what Buddha talked about, is the essence of who we are beyond the body mind. Do the, do the principles en engage, or the principles put forth in those wisdom traditions, Lao Tzu mm -hmm. and Confucian and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Vedic traditions, yes. do those truths still hold or they, are those truths to be abandoned that they had and have held for so many generations and centuries and millennia? Or are they to be just simply abandoned and put on the dustbin no, of history? I'm not saying they are to be abandoned at oh, all. I'd say I'm those just saying we ground with those. No, I'm saying yeah. those truths are the foundations that we build a new spiritual culture out of. Mm -hmm. Those truths are still applicable, all of them, everything Lao Tzu they said. They all seem to say the same things. Well, didn't exactly. They? Yeah. So that's why in the West, mm -hmm. because of the technology, because of the access to information, mm -hmm people can now bring those ideas, that same ideas that you are not just your body, that we are consciousness, mm. out into a public conversation. Mm. That is why people like Deepak Chopra, mm. who I personally really like and is the poster yeah. boy I mm. feel for mm. this new consciousness, mm -hmm. is mainstream. When well, you're he, talking new consciousness. Well, con that, I was trying to ground it. The grounded in the old traditions yeah. of what Buddha, Jesus, Lao Tzu said, yeah. which is that... And we might be able to bridge over into some of the more secular things like political economy and so forth, characteristic of the historical condition as well. Well, well I don't because know about the political economy. Because we're talking about the spiritual economy. traditions, well, and mostly the admonitions of our spiritual leaders have been roundly con uh, ignored by our political leaders throughout history a good deal. So that lays on between... This, well, the, that's the what's the problem, though, yeah. with the world is because well, to, those, to get at that. You well, know. that's it. The problem with the world now is that our political leaders have ignored those traditions and that, have throughout the human experience and have, except to you meet someone like Dennis Kucinich, who's the only politician I ever <laughs> met. <laughs> yeah, I met an interview who, yeah. who who talks about multidimensionality. Imagine mm. someone uh. talking about multidimensionality. So yeah. these politicians like George Bush or even some of the um, Democrat, they, or even Hillary Clinton, they give lip service to a sort of pseudo spirituality. But, as did Caligula, and well, as did Augustus but we, Caesar but and we Genghis Khan. But and, you said all those spiritual traditions. Yeah, well, I was trying to ground in it common. in those wisdom schools. And what yeah. is it they have in common? Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Well, We've had some divisions. We had uh, what was the guy uh, who did the thing about two cultures? Uh, C. P. Snow. He talked about two cultures, art and, and, and the sciences and so forth. But then we've also had divisions. What are the dialectic divisions? We have a male, female, of east, west, that sort of thing. So let's just say east, well, west. Well, we've we, had a difference between the east and the west, and the west is well, sort of... But do you know what the difference is between east and west? Uh, well, and the, tr and the spiritual traditions well, between, let's say, the Vedic... But and uh, then the Western traditions. But let me Maybe tell you what, how I those. understand the yes, difference please, is that in the West they say there's only one way of knowing, and that's a linear, logical development. One plus two plus three. In the East they say perhaps there are other ways of knowing that are not logical. There's an organic, intuitive way of knowing that's more of a gut feeling. It's more uh, tapped into the collective psyche. Do you think there's a difference along the right hemisphere, left hemisphere? Absolutely. And how do you see that? Uh, the dialectic? left hemisphere is very analytical. It uh -huh. says we're going to be clinical. We're not going to be emotional. Everything is uh, thought and, and logic. And the right hemisphere says, no, let's feel. Let's feel. It's the feminine side of us. Let's be more artistic. Let's tap into the way things are flowing. Uh, let's, let's look at the whole the holistic ideas come in because we're tapping now into the understanding of that feminine. If you're taking the right hemisphere to yeah. approach to it as being whole, then that would be inclusive of the left as well then Absolutely. somehow. Absolutely. And do the two blend? And do you the have... The two blend because... Bucky Fuller used to talk about sin, uh, you know, like you got tension and... Uh, tensional tension and... Uh, 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 and... and, and um, 
Um, there's two things in, in, in the structure of reality. There are two. There's always S two. Um, it's called syntropy. Mm -hmm. Or you've got you, uh, uh, tension and um, a, a more... The, the tensional integrity goes through a system. The system inclusing it all, including, inclusive of it all, well, is tensegrity. Well, you talked about tensegrity. You got east and west. E, you know, I have a better description uh, of that. All inclusive, but you have a tensional integrity, east and west, male, female. They come together. They come to in a synergistic, resonating something more than the sum. Of course they do. And yeah. You know how what explains that to me is mm. that if you take the yin yang symbol. Yeah, there's another dialectic we've got that's out a, of history. It's yeah. a dialectic, but in that dialectic it includes the other part within the yang there's a symbol of the yin and mm. within the yin there's a symbol of the yang yeah. so we've been totally dominated by the left brain you say yang. we being the west you the mean? we in the west have been dominated we're in the by, west we, were we the... have been dominated our culture have been dominated by the analytical logical understanding linear linear we've yeah. ignored the holistic view of things as as a cultural civilization. And you would associate that with uh, the male, sort of, or the tensional young, integrity? The young, yeah. the linear. Mm -hmm. So when you incorporate the feminine, yeah. the intuitive, this uh -huh. spatial, we mm -hmm. no longer see the trees, just the trees, we see the forest. That's mm -hmm. the difference. But within this no, other you, dialectic of, the, of China, we get mm -hmm. the yin inside the yang mm -hmm. and the yang inside the yin, which creates that synergy mm -hmm. that Fuller was talking about. Well, he calls it tensegrity. Yes, and it's it, built into the uh, the structure of the universe. But yeah. but but uh, I think that the Chinese understood it even more. They were pretty wise, weren't well, they? they? They were. had some pretty Lao and Tzu. So and we're integrating the philosophies of the East into the West to give us this holistic movement oh, of yeah. human potential. Okay. If we were to ignore that, yeah. we'd be on a crash course to destruction. Yeah, and that's a very danger. Well, and you pay attention to that in your works. You pay attention to those ancient wisdom traditions. At the same time, you're thinking about new science science and so forth, and the new realities that are emerging. Well, the new realities but is... But you're it's grounded in the traditional values. Of course. Values, yeah. The new reality is incorporating the things we've thrown out from the left brain way of viewing and incorporating the right brain so we can be both left and right brain. You can't just be right brained either. Mm. Right brained is chaos. It's, mm. it's, it's the totality. But you need to have the ego defined as self in order to have direction within that chaos. Uh -huh. It's time and space. Left brain time, right brain space. I know we got all kinds of you dialectic. Know, black, the dialectic, up, down, black, You know white. why the dialectic mm. exists? Because yeah. of the way human perception is. Mm. Human perception sees actually two things at once. Mm. I'm seeing you there as Harold Channer. Also, I'm projecting onto you a symbolic reality mm -hmm. of everything that I associate you with. Maybe mm. you look like my father. Mm. All the feelings yeah. that come up with me when I'm looking at this projection of reality mm -hmm. is suggested by this other way of looking at that, mm -hmm. that the world, which mm -hmm. is symbolism, is symbolic. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're constantly looking at the world through these two different parts of our brain all the time. It's just that the left brain has overridden this other feeling, emotional capacity. It's interesting the way the bicameral mind was developed, you know. It's really interesting because, and then you can cast back. We cast back to the ancient wisdom traditions, but then you can cast, uh, the science is opening up uh, understanding of things. I, if you're in a condition of um, ignorance in, in terms of what we've come to know scientifically and so forth, it's a very different way of confronting the environment than if you have some understanding of it. And if you go back further, we begin to get an idea of the evolution. Of bi we're part of a biological evolutionary mm -hmm. process. We're coming out of a bi. We're all in a sea of bacteria. We're all interrelated in ecological context with the with the with the whole. You mentioned Gaia, that it's almost can be seen as like an organism, and so forth. We go back, and then you can get back to a singularity because there was a time on this planet. Uh, when there were no homo sapiens here to express homo sapien consciousness. Okay. Uh, four million years ago, we were but, in Aust we were but, Australopithecus. But Harold, another singularity is actually consciousness itself. 
the non low this is a new reality the non local new reality good yeah. this is the non localness of our our consciousness the fact that we can connect consciously or you can actually tap into the way someone else is thinking and feeling means it's empathy empathy that's very human it's humanity but also yeah. psychically tuning in and right. as far as empathy they've uh. discovered something called mirror neurons really you know yeah. what mirror neurons i don't know what a mirror, mirror neuron neuron neuron. neurons are my ability to feel what you're feeling they did mm. this experiment with monkeys that they yeah. would get shocked if they were not behaving or something, but the monkeys watching, they were mm -hmm. wired to these electrocardiogram things or yeah. electro and stuff. Uh -huh. So every time this one monkey was shocked, the other monkeys that were also hooked up would stimulate, the same parts of their brain would be stimulated. Yeah, they had that thing about the hundred monkey or something. Where uh, that's they a get, different thing. We'll thing get to the hundred monkey. Was a but, guy named but Harold, Sheldrake. Harold. Yeah. Yeah. The, the fact that this monkey could feel what the other monkey yeah. was feeling, even feel though, it, yeah. is means, and they actually mapped a part of the brain that mm -hmm. they label mirror Isn't it neurons. Isn't amazing the way they can do that now? So mm. there's these things that humans, Homo sapiens, mm -hmm. have, or Homo sapiens sapiens, mm -hmm. as we're calling, the ability mm -hmm. to be self-conscious, mm -hmm. can feel what someone else is feeling. Yeah. And that's not just empathy. I think it's frequency. Uh -huh. So the understanding. Well, that's with that monkey thing. They 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 will invent something in Madagascar and it'll be picked up in uh, Australia somehow. Now, how do you think that works? Damned if I know. Oh, well, I'll tell you. Yeah, okay. I'll tell you. Oh, this, you know, okay. I do no, know, yeah. or, or at least I've devised. And this is with no telegraph. Or no no telegraph. There's no something internet. that Rupert yeah. Sheldrake devised That's called Rupert the morphogenetic Sheldrake. field. Morphic, I've interviewed Morphic him. resonance. Now, morphic yeah. resonance mm -hmm. means that all of us, all of us creatures that are basically the same form, humans, mm -hmm. have a field of consciousness that yeah. we're tapped into. When that field it learns something new, when mm -hmm. that field is impacted with new information, yeah. it's, if, if the critical mass is reached that understands this new information, yeah. that new information will then be passed through this morphogenetic field to all of humanity. To, well, all of humanity, or they did it with monkeys, too. They I did think. it with monkeys, they, they did it with rats, yeah, even. You know a rat? That's, if they, if they taught these that's rats... hearing it through the grapevine. Well, that's because it's oh. in our field of energy. Yeah, right. See, they did these experiments with mm -hmm. rats where they learned a certain uh, maze, and they yeah. did it uh, with a critical number of rats, and oh. then then they took rats that were are not related, uh -huh. new to it, and they mm -hmm. were able to learn it quicker mm -hmm. than the ones that originally did it. Same intelligence, except this was in the morphogenetic field of the rat. The same thing with the four-minute mile, you know? No one could break. Bannister. Bannister did it. He yeah. cracked the four Aussie. minute. He was an Aussie, so, yeah. But that ability was able to implant that into the morphogenetic field. So everyone after Bannister was able to do it. But for a I long time... I can't do a four-minute mile. Can no, you? but for no. runners, yeah. runners who uh, can and have tried to, yeah. they all cracked because it eventually cracked into the morphogenetic field. And that's the same. It, it became accepted in the morphogenetic field of our race. Do you, do you think know we what could, I mean? Do you think we could accept it that we're going to run a two-minute mile? Now, well, I don't think there are certain limits. Aren't there some limits here? Maybe. You know, maybe the you know, only you're, thing you're, impossible yeah. is the word impossible. Uh, well, you know, lots of stretch, people talked yeah. about new realities throughout time. We know H.G. Wells in the early 1900s. Yeah. You know what he said? What did he say? He said, one day, uh -huh. you're going to be able to write something here at this desk, uh -huh. and it will be instantly seen around the world. That's impossible. He, it can't be done. Of course it, it can. couldn't be done. It couldn't Nobody be done could do until it. there was email. Yeah, right. But I know. some I people joking. had visions yeah. of what was po and everyone else said that was impossible yeah. of, so that's what I'm investigating in new realities the two those are two dialectics the one that have had the visions the other ones that said no it's impossible you know the guy uh, Simon Newcomb no, no. said that it was impossible to have a heavier than air machine fly yeah. I mean how is that possible the Hindenburg and, and no the Wright brothers oh the Wright oh I see that I was thinking of a so dirigible. even when the yeah. Wright brothers yeah. came out and they were able to fly you know, the newspapers said it was impossible, and Teddy Roosevelt, it was only after he did tests, but most people said if, we, if this was possible, surely we would have heard about it. Mm -hmm. And no one had heard about it because it was not accepted into the morphogenetic field. It was Morphog not, or, or the, the paradigms. Or the Let's paradigm. call Paradigm is uh, Thomas Kuhn, and he's uh, talking about a whole series of interrelated right. systems. Morphogenetic field is a subconscious paradigm. Mm -hmm. Let's call it that. Okay. So we are moving, mm -hmm. New Realities is about building a new paradigm of possibility. Well. You know, in the 1800s, they said it was impossible for rocks to fall out of the sky. 
all these anomalies. What until are those meteorites? Meteorites. They, yeah. they never saw a meteorite. They uh, would just see rocks. They the saw ground. ancients would see meteorites. Yeah, but they didn't associate those shooting stars with rocks on the yeah, ground. They probably associated with gods or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. All the anomalies, this is what Thomas Kuhn says yeah. in his uh, Structures of Scientific right. Thought. Uh, he says the anomalies of one paradigm mm -hmm. become the foundations for the next paradigm. Well, it could be, it know? could then, a, a new paradigm could subsume rather than overthrow necessarily. Well, it Although does Although you, you spoke about the geocentric and Hieronymus Bosch and some of those paintings that that really wrecked havoc on people's sense of identity when they were told that they were not the center of the universe. The Catholic Church only let Galileo off the hook about 10 years ago well, we, for having postulated such a thing that was so intrinsically but, damaging to human identity. But you know what's just as damaging mm. and why it's been so suppressed by the government is the fact that UFOs and ETs are there. That's going to be the next Copernican revolution. Well, and there is evidence. Our government has tons of documents. Project Bluebird, J. Allen Hynek, was someone who worked for the Air Force and still he, until he started to investigate UFOs and he said, you know what? There's something here. And he coined something the term. Something surfaced just a couple of weeks ago. Of or course. And November 12th of this year, there was a press conference mm -hmm. in Washington at the press club mm -hmm. with pilots from all over the world, Army pilots and, and, and just regular pilots from, from Iran, from France, from South America, all saying, you know what? I, see, I have seen something I could not explain. Fife Symington, the former governor of Arizona, saw the Phoenix Lights in 1997. What's the Phoenix Lights? The Phoenix Lights was a massive sighting mm -hmm. in around March of 1997 uh -huh. of something flying over the city and over the city of Phoenix that oh, no one Phoenix. could explain. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And they tried to explain it, but Fife Symington, the governor, says, no, this is, can't be explained. So the government knows that it's going to upset people's ego structures. We are well, still thinking think we're the them. center of the universe, Harold. Think Do you know how archaic we are? Well, yeah, we got these ego things and everything, but there's some reason for that and everything. But uh, Spielberg made a movie, Encounter of the Third Kind, that sort of spelled that out in science fiction terms. Well, Very often, science fiction is ahead of the well, curve. Well, you know, Spielberg sense. made that movie from witnesses of phenomena that mm. he talked to. All he did yeah. was put together case histories yeah. of people who have had that experience. Right. And it was a, uh, J. Allen Hynek who coined that, this Air Force guy coined the term close encounters of the third kind uh -huh. and the fourth kind and the fifth kind. Oh, they got fourth and fifth kind the too? The fourth kind means you have a really... He's like, a science fiction writer? No, yeah. he, was a, he was hired by the Air Force uh -huh. to investigate UFO sightings okay. uh -huh. and actually debunk them until mm -hmm. he realized that there was something to it. Well, think about it for a minute. If um, Carl Sagan had that thing SETI, mm -hmm. and they had that great series Cosmos and so mm -hmm. forth, and he got very, he, he wrote the book Contact. I think they made a film out of it, Jody Foster, mm -hmm. and so forth. And the, the SETI, they're down in Puerto Rico, Arecibo, they got these great uh, reaching out into the universe, trying to make contact well, with other intelligence that might exist. And uh, to posit that these, these UFOs are, are mm -hmm. from another realm is a, a huge, like you say, transformation, if that's it, the case. It is the case. And I mean, just think. Do you think well, we're the only part? I mean, you know what? I think this was Buckminster Fuller. I'll quote you. He says, whether the universe, whether we're alone in the universe or whether the universe is full of life, both ideas are staggering. That's true. That so is think true. about that's that. An, that's axiomatically true. Yeah. So, but think about the mm. fact that could we really be that unique here? What uh, J. Uh, uh, Stephen Gould called a glorious accent. Isn't that a little ridiculous and self-centered? Don't you think it's time we had another Copernican revolution where we're no longer seen as a center of the universe? emotionally and psychologically? Don't you think it's time? Well, pro 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 probability theory, uh, since we're experiencing, you know, they got a telescope. Do you realize they got a telescope now? What's it called? The uh, Wilkinson? Mm -hmm. And they were able to take a picture of the shock wave of the Big Bang only 200,000 years after its occurrence. 
13.7 mm -hmm. billion years ago. And there's a, uh, there's, a th there's a telescope array now, LISA. But what does that have to do with active. life? What does that have to do with life in the becomes, universe, Harold? It becomes active in 2011. But we're talking about life in They're going to be able to take a picture of the shock wave but of the Big Bang. Let me finish okay, the sure, sentence. Sure. The, tw the shock wave of the Big Bang within less than a second of the... Uh, now, that's an incredible ability to take the measure of the broader universe. But, you and know, that's a lie because they're only photographing the visible universe. You know that 95% of the universe is made of dark, dark energy. energy. Yeah. So they're only photographing five... Oh, the shock wave of the Big Bang. Now, you I may know. not think... You, I've heard you use terms like singularity and that kind mm -hmm. of thing, and that's important. But if that idea of the Big Bang is correct, it seems to be accepted by a lot of people... The, the, the ability to take the measure of things mm -hmm. is increasing so exponentially that you're down to where you'd be able to take the measure of things like that. And they've reached out, mm -hmm. and they're trying to see if there is life. And certainly just, pr and then, then they're coming and the, the, the logic or the expansion, the mathematics mm -hmm. of string theory is that there are likely other dimensions. There are parallel universes. Well, Wormholes would connect us to other universes. There's all kinds of things that are coming available to us, but they have not yet had, as far as I know, outside of the body of evidence called UFO, they've not had anything, and Carl Sagan was reaching uh, SETI. They've not got anything yet. Because that is they sci no, wait a minute. That is not is scientifically able to be explained and understood by people of uh, life other than on this third planet within the solar system yet. Do you know why? Because it's not in their paradigm, their reality to consider it. No, but the scientific community science the will scientific not look at the fact that there are pictures of UFOs. Well, no, well the, the, yeah, yeah, okay, but they, what I'm saying is yes. that if that comes to be accept, if that comes to be the case, it will be a gigantic breakthrough. And then but one would, not ready one for would it. ask, one would ask if, if, why, why, if there, because if I understand it, and help me here, uh -huh. right, I'm trying to understand, like the UFO that they have in Third Encounters, or that there yeah. are, li there are civilizations uh, that are there, in other realms, right, mm -hmm. beyond the, even our solar system mm -hmm. or something, and that why would they be so coy as to just appear to somebody in Phoenix or something here and there like that for a long, I don't know when they first appeared. Well, first there, of all. Were there ancient uh, accounts of that kind of thing? But there they, were. Okay. That's the Bible that, even uh, has That's it. interesting. I'd like to get to that. I'm not sure. But they would be. But then at another level, I was thinking oh, one day in the shower, and I was thinking, well, yeah, if there, if there was that, if there was something to that, it really would be, in a certain sense, and yet it have to be terribly wise, and they would have to be terribly knowledgeable, people that were able to do that. But there's also something they... But they would have to be wise enough to know that that, and they would have to be aware of the fact that there's an, a, a, a form of intelligence that in the normal course of understanding the evolution of consciousness mm -hmm. can be understood within the normally accepted paradigm, you well, might that, say. Well, that, to answer all and that, Harold... They, let me finish. Okay. And so then, if they did that, then they would... Normally, they, they would not do it all at once. This Dazzle Gradually that I mentioned, this book, a fantastic book by Dorian Sagan and, um, and Lynn Margolis. It's just an absolutely wonderful book. Well, you answered your own book. question. No, but it, 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 Emily Dickinson said, the real truth cannot be observed all at once because it must dazzle gradually or all the men be blind. If it came, the real truth came all at once. It can't that come. is the answer so it's to the UFO slow. question. That's you what I'm got trying it, to get. and you helped me figure that well, out. No, it, it, it Thank you. So it has to come, and, it, and the, that would make some sense out of this slow pace like of things that. developing, and it couldn't come dazzle. all at once because all men would be blinded by the by that by, so by that reality. new reality you're absolutely right that is why shows and that like may mine. be a metaphor for further understandings of consciousness and its evolution and also gold and Eld eldritch is that his name he, they work together and yeah. they got the idea Stephen of Google, the, uh, the uh, punctuated uh, punctuated evolution. equilibrium so let that species do not appear there's quantitative change within a system, and then the, the species, the, mm. uh, we appeared 200,000 years ago. And well, it happens, that's debatable. It happens 
all at once. Well, it that's the opposite of what you said. It dazzle gradually, though. That's the very reverse of well, that. Well, it is. It is. I in say a the gradual, sense. the dazzle gradually, like the Emily Dickens poem, mm -hmm. is really the key Dickinson. to under Dickinson. Yeah. The understanding of this, the slow integration of this UFO ET reality okay. into our consciousness. Except, so, of course, it's not slow in the sense of geologic slow. I but mean, it it's, is. It's only but, just been relevant, and it may be emerging now. Well, it's slow because people aren't ready to accept it because they might be overwhelmed by that exactly truth. Exactly right. Uh, so that might be why, let's say, from their standpoint, if this, if this is a conscious creature from another realm or something, that would be the reason that they would be dazzling us gradually because it would be too much to do it all at once. You're absolutely right. And the other key is that we need to come together as a unit with a singularity of focus where we recognize, big term, where we yeah. recognize each other's differences and embrace it like all the fingers of your hands are different but they all come together to form more power. This is where we are, the critical stage of our political cultural history to recognize, to acknowledge differences and to accept them and come together as a unifying force. Why should we come together as a unified force when we have not done that through all of human because history? Because that's what evolution is about. Look at Europe. Europe has a single economy. Look how um, abundant they are. The planet, in order for it to transcend scarcity, which you've talked about a lot, That's needs, issue, needs yeah. to come together as a singularity so we, need, so we know what parts of this great earth needs to be fed. There needs to be a singularity. We mm. have the technology you to like, do it. You like, you like James Lovelock Gaia and the idea that the earth this, is an organism uh, so, in a certain sense. Now so you've I, used that term. I've used that a lot. Now, mm -hmm. if we show this clip with what You have a clip, a film clip. I have a okay. clip that really puts together a lot of the paradigms I've been talking about from one of the guests named Bruce Lipton, who uh -huh. talks about all these ideas uh -huh. from a biological viewpoint, but has metaphysical overtones and implications of what I'm talking about as a singularity of humanity. Me metaphysical. Metaphysical and physical understandings. This is one of my, I have That's it up. It's another dialectic. All these dialectics yeah. start to become meta. Things think un meta. unified. There is a, we live in a dialectic because of the two parts of our is brain. There, is there a part of reality that is meta to the normally understood consciousness of Homo sapiens but is not tied into the ontology of the universe, as most of your religious traditions try and do, that is an altered reality. Uh, it's not the whole of the universe and a spiritual thing and God and so forth, but it is meta to what we've had historically. And I'll what tell do we you call exactly that? What, that would be well, called would the transcendent tra meditative transcendental state, the state where you That's drop out of, of your ego, uh -huh. where, you, where you become the witness consciousness. That is... The meta, that is the meta-ego state because you're witnessing your own thoughts. That's a very good question. I'm glad I had what I think is the answer. So when you drop out of this conscious left brain, linear thinking, when you start to witness your thoughts, mm -hmm. you drop into that meta-state. Well, that's that the sort of thing state. that uh, Mesh Yoga and a lot of the Vedic things would do. But the Beatles the sang about that. But you can't live there. Uh -huh. You have to live in the world. So it's a constant moving back. That's another dialectic that it is. that's come out of history in a certain sense and the way of getting into touch with higher yes. states of, so-called enlightened or higher states of consciousness. But the yeah. biggest uh, dialectic is the one that goes from the one to the many to the one to the many that happens in evolution. And we're going to see that on okay, this Okay, yeah, we have a videotape. We're talking here about new realities with... Uh, the dean and the host and the producer of New Realities here on, on Manhattan Neighborhood so, Network, one of the leading edge uh, expressions of uh, television expressions of new consciousness. So if, and you've got to tape your setting it can, up. We're going to set, set it up. up. So if we can uh, hear this in the studio, you'll understand where I'm coming from. That ties together biological, metaphysical, and this unification of consciousness. The Vedics have been telling us for a long time that there are no academic disciplines in reality, that reality is a seamless web, and I think it's becoming obvious that that's axiomatically true. So well, we shouldn't probably be talking about biological, but I understand what you're doing. No, first. biology really biology. is the key. So let's watch okay. this tape with Bruce Okay, Lipton. let's set it up. We're running it's a up tape up on now. YouTube. You could... Um, 
Just pull see up the free. Apple. What? With a good price. You can see it for free. You can see it for free because I yeah. think it's very it's important. It's curriculum. And this has it's been curriculum. So let's just get the Apple generator okay, up in the... Okay, there we go. Uh, now okay, they're running Just press the play and press the studio sound as well. Okay, run that. So let's, let's just see. Let's, he, let's hear, hear that. Okay, see Okay. It. Here we go. Let's hear okay. it in here. And if Put you can it pump it into the studio, appreciate it. But don't talk now. They may be still mine. There we go. Turn that sound back up. Sound. Sound, please. Why'd you touch it? The keyboard is only so big. Right. So okay. you had, we, we hooked up with other multi, sounds. Okay. You you create that. a multicellular organism. So right. amoebas Listen. created us. Okay. In reality, I am a bustling community of 50 trillion amoebas working in a community, sharing jobs and labor. Why? To create a living entity that will survive. Right. Human beings, individual humans, each one of you, each one of us, is a cell in a larger community coming together to share awareness to create one living organism and it would be called humanity. Okay. We are not humans until we create humanity. Uh -huh. When we create humanity, which is when we all recognize that we're all cells in the same living organism mm -hmm. and work in a coherent fashion, we have then created the next level of evolution. Mm -hmm. The evolution is not on the individual. We already have all the information capacity that we can, we can't even deal with the amount we can deal with. Right. But once we come together in community, the synergy of awareness that will be passed from one cell to the next would be the equivalent of taking a single amoeba and comparing that life of that single cell to my human body, which is a community of amoebas. So is the internet a kind of next step in this community? The internet is, is a definite evolutionary leap. It is the equivalent of the communication system by which all the cells of my body are coherent. Mm -hmm. So that we have an ability for all the cells in our new human body, the mm -hmm. human organization, humanity, to communicate with each other and share information, which is why the cells came together in the first place. So where are we going? The this is key. This biological part. evolution is fractal, mm. meaning it has a very basic formula that reiterates itself over and over again. I'll give you an example. The cell of the human, the cell of the amoeba are essentially the same cell, same structure. Right. But then you look at all the diversity of biology and you say, but, but they're all basically the same cells. Right. So the fractal is the cell. And the chaos creates all the different organizations of cells, yet they're all still based on the same fundamental unit. Okay. But then the, pro the the issue is this, the cell, this is it. when it got to a big enough community, recapitulated itself in a community called the multicellular organism. Right. The human yeah. is a cell okay. enlarged as a community. It's, uh -huh. We are a cell. Okay. When a community of cells. We are a community, say. yeah, but the human then actually is a reiteration of a cell. Okay. The point, very simple. No matter how complex I am as a human, with all the functions that you ascribe to me, that there are no new functions in my human body that are not already present in a single cell. The human is a reiteration of a cell. Everything that I do, a cell already does. I mean, it's logical. How can I do something that a cell can't do? I'm so, cellular. So yeah. now the community of humans are... Are a multicellular organization uh, which comes together and makes a wholeness. Okay, now, but here's the interesting part. It sort of like jumps like bootstrapping itself. One cell... Mm -hmm. later becomes a, mo a human, which later becomes humanity. Mm -hmm. And when humanity is complete, the Earth as an organism mm -hmm. completes its evolution. It's a living, breathing, pulsing Gaia. Uh -huh. It is now complete. When it is complete, what did, when the cell completed its evolution, what was its next level of recourse? To hook up with other cells. Right. And when the human completed its evolution, what was it? To, to hook, hook up, up with, with other humans. humans. Right. When the Earth completes its evolution, uh -huh. We are then at the level of a unity with a voice of unity that allows us to speak as a one, which will allow us to speak as, with other ones. Beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. That's, that's, <laughs> well, that's we're exciting. on the process. We're 
Okay. That's really interesting. I find that really interesting. You know, 600, <clears throat> 600 million years ago, all fauna uh, was contained in unicellular spongiform. Mm -hmm. They had just broken off and they'd gone through the early stages of the evolution. That was a singularity. So all fauna is a descendant of sponge. Uh, the reptilian core is part of our makeup. Mm -hmm. we're, 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 we've evolved through the evolutionary process. And we reached a point where um, there were these singularities, like you're saying. That, 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 that metaphor you had about uh, there's 100 trillion cells in a human organism. Mm -hmm. And they all work as a system. And they're all overlaid with the design DNA. Mm -hmm. And they, they work as a system. And it's constantly changing. It's just a, it's just a constantly changing situation. And then that thing, it's a little dangerous when you start getting dangerous or interesting when you start getting to metaphors of comparing biological process with things sociological and their human Why? condition. Why? Why is that well, dangerous? Well, it's just a little tricky. Hitler tried and other people well, have tried and that kind of thing. depends what metaphor you're using. Yeah, but, you know, but it's an interesting one and so forth. What? And the thing is, you're talking about new realities. And so what you're trying to open upon is not a new reality of Republican, Democrat, or man, woman, That's or something. That's an old reality. It's, a, it's a, a new reality in terms of the evolution of consciousness. Right. And it is interesting, you're talking about uh, seti, or reaching out for signs of life. In, well, a life, yeah, even life. There, there's no, no, we do not know, at least outside of the things that uh, come from conjuring of consciousness and so forth, or projections of thought that what might be, or UFO sightings, well, and that sort of, outside of that sort of thing. We don't have a scientific contact with life anywhere else in the universe or multiverse but you know, that Harold, we know of. Harold, you don't know that. Harold, the government, I hate to break the news to you, has alien bodies. Roswell, why do you think Roswell was such a big... And they kept it secret because they feel empowered to support the old paradigm where right. they can control people. Well, all right, that might be part and of so the thing by which they introduce it gradually. That kind yes. of thing, that could be, that's yes. understandable. So you but just have to stop thinking out of the old paradigm and saying we don't have any evidence and if no, you I didn't say they don't have evidence. They don't have, it's not part of the common understanding. It isn't. It no, isn't. Okay, it I'll, is I'll go with you there. Okay, but so it's a new reality. Mm -hmm. And then the question becomes, what are we talking about when we talk about a new reality? We've been here, a singularity, at least in understanding mitochondria understanding, and there's linguistic overlays, too, that the, all of us, we're what, two, 6.5 billion now or so, something like that. We're all descended of a common ancestor. I believe this. I heard you question it. I, I think it makes sense. Uh -huh. uh, about 200,000 years ago, it could be from a single individual common ancestor, an Eve, we're talking that about we're descended thought. from, and, and it but came and it appeared. That would be a singularity in terms of off homo yeah, habilis. But, but we're talking about, when we talk about realities, we're not talking about necessarily the physical world. The physical world will exist. We're talking about ways of thinking. Yeah. That's what produces a reality. Right. You know? That's uh, true. Hundreds and there of was a new reflective consciousness uh, contained within this uh, punctuated equilibrium, a new species appearing as our species. But the and way we, we think, Now, the question you know, is, are we coming to the end of that? Are we coming to the end of 200,000 years of human existence, 10,000 generations, and are we coming into a new relationship in terms of the universe at these times in which you and I speak. We absolutely and if we are. are, why now? Why not 1900? Why not 1700? Well, why now in this year of 2007, let's say? What is their characteristic of the condition in which we find ourselves now that heralds such this? Okay. What are the evidences for it? Or what are the, um, what are the, are the, the um, metaphors that can be offered that give an understanding that this, like in a punctuated equilibrium or a birth, let's say, we've been gestating. Mm -hmm. We've been gestating in a certain consciousness, and a gestation is within the womb. Okay. You're gestating within the womb, and you're about to leave the womb. You're about to come into a new relationship. And what is there about this time in which you and I sit and talk that is different from... 200,000 years of human existence, a singularity that began our species and this level of consciousness. And is it, is it that, that, that relates us to this, I talked to you before about a meta level. To I got understand, the question. No, let me finish. I'm almost done. The meta level, 
but not going to the spiritual things that have been the legends and things by which mankind has lived and tried to understand the broader realities in terms of a lot of those wisdom traditions. You give them credence, you subsume them, but you don't accept them at face value as ontologically explaining the whole universe. But short of that, what has transformed in a, let's say, begin at a materialistic level that makes this time different than all of human history and the evolution of consciousness right. part of the universe? Well, I'm not going to totally leave out the spiritual dimension, but to okay. start on the physical level, it is what Bruce Lipton said, it is the internet, the fact that we, like McLuhan said, live in a global village. There's nothing that goes on anywhere on the planet that we, sitting in our living rooms, would not know about if we cared to instantly. That creates a new mechanism of feeling of, of a global humanity. That's just a very social understanding of our connection to each other. So there's a unity of consciousness that comes together because of something like the internet. Mm -hmm. That's just one thing. Now that the has... Internet, okay. Yeah. That's one thing. That's an extension of consciousness. That technology it's, is an extension of It's the nervous of system of our planet. What yeah. Lipton also says is that the Earth itself is a conscious being. Other people have said that too. Humans are these receptor sites. We are bringing in new information. So perhaps... We are here to help evolve the earth itself. But you're talking about metaphors and symbols. Well, throughout history, they've used things like astrology. Yeah, mustard at, seeds. Uh, mustard seeds, astrology. The, Lake. The, one of the more recent ones is the discovery of the Mayan calendar ending in the year 12, 12. 12, 2012. 2012. Now, yeah. what happens actually in that year on, mm -hmm. on the winter solstice, December 21st, 2012, is that the rising sun... Mm -hmm. of the winter solstice, which is the alignment of the Earth and the Sun, mm -hmm. also aligns with the galactic center, which they call the galactic center is the black hole at the middle of our Milky Way galaxy. It's a dark patch of sky mm -hmm. that the minds were able to see. That alignment, which they call the great womb of creation, mm -hmm. that alignment with the center of the galaxy, our Sun and our Earth, the Mayans say will birth a new consciousness. And is that where they came up with that date? That is why they came up with that date. Astrologically. Uh, or, or visually, being yeah. able to yeah. see that okay. the galactic plane, mm -hmm. you know, some yeah. strange abnormalities in the galactic plane, the solar planes, that mm -hmm. all planets except Pluto rotate pretty much on the same plane. Yeah. There's all the space in between. But plane they, of the ecliptic, I the think. The plane of the ecliptic yeah. is pretty much flat when mm -hmm. it could be as many dimensions. Yeah. That plane of the ecliptic lines up with the plane of the galactic. Mm -hmm. And that creates a unification in consciousness that, now if you believe some aspect of astrology, or, or, or that it stimulates a new way of understanding. Terence McKenna talked about Terence McKenna, yeah. Mm -hmm. He talked about that uh -huh. date uh -huh. being the, the end of history as we know it. Jose Aguayas talked. So these are metaphors. The end of history. That's an interesting as we term. know it. Francis Fukuyama took that term I geopolitically know. and so forth and said that we're at the end of history because the dialectic between capitalism and socialism would come to the end and capitalism at one. But the dialectic mm -hmm. actually becomes unified. C capitalism and socialism is just another metaphor for explaining this unification of consciousness that we're coming into. Well, the into. consciousness is another level, in a certain sense, if I may. And the, the thing is that they interrelate. We tried to interrelate the ancient wisdom systems to the geopolitical evolving of social affairs and organizing things and everything but like that. But don't you that. think socialism is And now we reach a point. One of the things you said, the technology is an extension of consciousness into the environment and we have a unique capability of being able to do that in terms of the other creatures mm -hmm. um the, you know the, you 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 can extend your technology and make the world different than in, in the eden-like sense is a given by which most of the creatures confront the environment in which they find themselves mm -hmm. and so we can make it different and we've made it that way now we've reached we've been so clever at being able to do that and then the political working out and all of that kind of stuff and we got it now to the point where this is something I'd bring up, that we now have a, a, a system. History's evolved. We've come to a certain point. We've got 6.5 billion. We're heading for 10 billion on this planet. And we have a technological capability that has changed exponentially in the time in which you and I live. In 1945, it was not possible. We had two 
uh, atomic weapons had come out of special theory of relativity and so forth. One went on Hiroshima and one went on Nagasaki, mm -hmm. and that was all they had at that time. We now have weapon systems, apparently, Monsieur Kaku and others will tell us, and people who understand it, that we have weapon systems which we were impotent in terms of their capability as recently as the Second World War, that they have weapon systems now that are evolved and are existing, worrying on hair trigger alert, that if they were to be unleashed in a spasm of hatred as we have exhibited against one another throughout all of human history, one power against another, it would apparently, and you can only model it, mean that it would destroy the entire hominoid line. That's why now, do you, you talk about the... Do you think that is true? Do you think that's a true capability. You're talking about well, a capability well, that know, is meta to the normal reality. Well, no, but we're talking about, true? you're talking, the truth is that weapons can destroy, and the understanding of these ancient wisdom traditions, the foundation of all of that was love. Mm -hmm. So if we start to integrate the feeling, you don't look so strange when no, I say No, I didn't the understand. The feeling what of it. love, love, the compassion, the, this is what Jesus and the original former Christianity stood for. Yeah. The fact that we can now transcend all that fear and destruction. Why? Because now we no, but know. No, answer the first question. Do you mm -hmm. believe that it's a fact that if the weapons are unleashed, that we have well, the capability? Well, there's and nothing capa about belief. Of course, we can no, no. destroy we the world. We didn't have that capability. But that's in not no, a we question. Did not it's a fact. We did not have that capability a, in 1945. Okay, but it's a fact that, yes, weapons can change. destroy the so world. So you're looking for it. No, not change the world, I think. Destroy but it the change, world. It destroy homo that's sapiens. That's a fact. No, but it was not characteristic 45 years ago. We yeah. were impotent. Now, yeah, on the obverse side yeah. of that materialistic seeing mm -hmm. of things, what is the reality? Is there a technological reality that we can transcend a certain condition that led to war that is not being recognized because it's a paradigm shift mm -hmm. so, mag so large that it can't be understood? Well, you're Money looking for technology. Yes. I'll quote Joseph Campbell that said it's not technology that's going to save the world. It's intuition. Well, that's so a good So it's not intuition. a technology. It's Buckman. a human technology. Buck Mr. Fuller Harold, wrote a book. The in, technology in your body and your ability to feel is so far superior to the weapons of mass destruction that this country and other countries around the world Do you world think we're going to, do you think the odds are, if you were Nick the Greek, that we're going to blow up our species no, the rather odds than are, bring liberation? The, and if you had liberation and you had, you still got people living on less than a dollar a day, they can't realize anything like their potentiality. We have a technologically uh, augmented capability to transcend scarcity. We could provide for everybody in a way that would liberate the human spirit collectively, the whole of the human yes, spirit, we every, need, every we cell, need new governments and we do not that have will, a, we do not have a system that can open. We need to or create those systems that create. That's why well, I that's want people I to think for. new realities. Well, what is the new reality? What, the new makes, reality the new, what makes the new reality? What makes the new reality possible when the new reality has not been existent throughout all of human history? It's the technology, the, the computer it's technology, the it's the technology, and the human compassion, along with that technology, to feed everyone in the world because we have the capacity to do that. Not only feed, but you have a Close, DNA educate. Over to, yeah. to we do need it. politicians and then there that will understand be, that. Then Harold. we will just say, and then we will have, a, if we have humanity liberated, like an orchestra where everybody's realizing their potential, there will be a resonancy that will inter accommodate us to the universe without any flying saucers. Or with. Or, or with. with. Or maybe subsuming with. Or integration with. with. Well, we've Thank run you. out you of just, time. I love that last point that you yeah. made because that is really the essence of what new reality is. That would be a new reality all. that would introduce us to a new relationship in universe transcendent. I would say the odds are we're going to destroy it. Probably I would most say the systems, odds are that we aren't. Uh, most systems, and I'll bet you. Most systems that evolved in the universe probably get to that point and then destroy themselves rather than That's realize the liberation. You know, the complexity theory is either systems break down or they go to a higher level of complexity well, while the transcending And we scarcity, haven't heard from any yet. It is. We're building that, but it's not out in the open. They're tapping through the people. You heard it here. Alan <laughs> Seinfeld, New Realities. We're talking on a lot of different planes. Alan, thanks Thank for coming. You, Always good it's talking really to you. Happy, happy holidays. No, I hope, I hope we got...